This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like dark cocoa almonds. Support this podcast by ordering a free NatureBox sampler box at naturebox.com slash screenplay. This podcast is brought to you by Me Undies, super soft, great fitting underwear that doesn't ride out. Get 20% off your first order and free shipping at MeUndies.com slash screenplay. Get 20% off your first order and free shipping at MeUndies.com slash screenplay. Sounds accurate. We were literally watching the intro like you guys, oh, hi, you're watching Screenplay, but we were just watching the intro going, what are those things like? I think they look like popcorn. Brandy, you, you think they look like nerds? I, no, I think they look nerds. like nerds. Ah. They're like molecules? Putting words in my mouth. There you go. Hi. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Today we are joined by Mr. John Reisinger, Mr. Brandon Farmahini, and Aaron Zek. And in the awesome video store, we have <laughs> Mr. Gus Rola. Gustavo. Hi. Hey, I'm so, here. You have a good princess wave. I Do saw, I? Thank you. No. I saw Gus at hey, Jeff's uh, Halloween party, and uh, he was dressed just as a generic zombie. Generic whatever. Maybe <laughs> accident victim, maybe zombie. You don't know. I don't know. Did uh, Esther make your costume? She spent a lot of time making her costume, yeah. and mine was the afterthought that took 10 minutes, and I'm fine with that. Like, <laughs> I, like, I, I was like, whatever. I love that you even spent 10 minutes on that, because we have bins of probably... I don't know, a thousand different zombie shirts in yeah. the office. You pointed that out once we were there. I thought that would have saved me 10 minutes. Yeah. I you can do a lot in 10 minutes. Her jacket was pretty awesome. I was really hoping it was a specific zombie, like, you know, Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead or like 28 like, Days Later, but he's like, just no, just no. Walmart generic zombie, yeah. number one. You don't, you don't know, whatever. <laughs> we, I, maybe I, I was a car accident victim. <laughs> zombie Gus is scarier to me than any of those things. I can see that. I, I, yeah, and even worse than Zombie Gus, you encountered Zombie Drunk Gus, which is uh, <laughs> drunk the, Gus. the worst of the three. <laughs> and and Esther was, I thought she was a Pokemon character, but then you re what? I realized she was the female, the, the young, the young girl from... Uh, yeah, yeah, she was from Clementine Walking from The Walking Dead. Which, in, and, once I realized cool that... season two jacket. Yeah, once I realized that, I was like, actually, she did a really good job. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to talk... She was a Pokemon. Oh, she was a Pokemon. I said the wrong name for a Pokemon one time, and I had the internet did not let, let me down for yeah. a long time. Uh, so uh, it's No Shave November, or is that is that a thing? No Shave November. Is that how it goes? Yeah. I'm, I'm giving that a go. Boo. Uh, yeah. Well, you already have a beard, Gus. Why are you booing that? <laughs> oh. It's, it's, it's a club? Yeah, come on. I, I rock this year round. <laughs> are you upset? Are people just like grouping you in it, and you're like, no, I was here first. <laughs> I'll shave just for the fuck of it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like I a heard, spiteful shave. I hear Dita Von Teese on Halloween dresses up like a normal person because all year around she dresses up like in black and goth and stuff. <laughs> I don't know who that is. She's uh, a blondie. Oh, she's a she was married to Marilyn Manson for a little bit. Yeah, um, she, she's a she's a pinup. What do you like, call it? Like a fetish tease. model? No, she's she's like a strip tease. Does chickie. she do this? Yeah, well, this, like, the, this, <laughs> if I was a strip this teaser, this would be like, the like, let me take off, da-da, 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 All right. That, you know what I mean? So anyway, so I was, I wanted to talk to you, Brandon, because you, 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 you rock some scruff. I've never seen you with the beard, though, uh, John. Brandon, you can grow a beard, probably grow. takes you, what, two, <laughs> two weeks? Uh, it's, this is my about, facial hair is completely random. It's like, a week. like, there's no intentions about anything. Like, I think if you look at me on a week-to-week -week basis, every, every week is different. It's just an issue of like, oh, I should shave. I forgot to do that in the last seven days. See, what's weird about like just and shower. What's weird about I mean, most Mexicans in general is I could grow a I'm mustache head. Like, no, 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 me. I'm saying about me. Like I could grow a mustache when I was like ten, but, but when I can't grow a beard because it all comes in in like weird patches. Yeah. So, but I'm trying to do the no shave November. But I just found out yesterday that I'm going to be getting to go do this Hunger Games thing in New York. And I, I, I could do this conference thing with all the cast and crew, but I also get to do sit down interviews with a few, uh, with a few actors. And one it's of them like is you said I get to seduce interviews with yeah, the actors. Yeah, I heard well, that too. I was Freud. like, I'll help you seduce Jennifer. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> just, just, just what I heard. Cigar. I. But no, the whole thing is that I get to sit down with Natalie Dormer, who you might know as she's Marjorie on Game of Thrones. Right. Oh, she's awesome. She's and when I uh, when I saw my girlfriend, she was so pissed. She was like, "She is so pretty. I know, I'm so she jealous." Is. She is. She's like, she's got the whole half shade thing going on, and not a lot of girls can pull that off. Some girls look really kind of weird with it, but she no, she rocks I like, it. I like I looked her up on Google, and there's all these uh, photos of her with like a half mohawk thing you're yeah, talking about, and she rocks it. <laughs> yeah. She's one of those girls. She has like a rock and like she's got a great body, but she's like also like very beautiful. I like her smirk. She's a little sassy. Little I don't know. Who, and so is she's not been in the other Hunger Games movies, right? 
No, no. this will be her premiere. I didn't even know she was going to be in it, to be honest. She's one of the rebels. She's one of the newer characters. Kind of like in the oh. last movie, Jenna, Mal- Jenna Malone was a new character. Yeah, I think we finally see yeah, District but 13. Yeah, she's, she's not a, a bad yeah, person. Yeah, which they've changed though. around. Yeah. Oh, from the book? Yeah, but they, they portray it a little bit differently in the book than they've kind of done it now. Um, where, like, she kind of got notion of District 13 before, like, the end of... Oh, in the book, she kind of... There's yeah, there's, like, there's it, talk about as it. As opposed to, like... Yeah. Boom, boom. Like she sees, she sees in like they they show stock footage or they show footage of District 13 at the beginning of the like the the what is it the reaping, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and she recognize like someone points out or she points out that it's like the same footage every single time, which means they're not going back and getting new footage, so they're like reusing yeah, something, so it might be actually yeah. not look like that. Did you guys hear about? Uh, I was talking about Jim Malone. She was in the last Hunger Games movie. But did you hear about um, the actor or the extra who's getting sued pretty hardcore by Warner Brothers because they were on set whenever her character kind of, I guess, gets debuted as the female Robin? And so one of the extras came out and goes, oh, and the girl Robin is in it, and Robin's a girl, and it was this whole thing, and now she's getting, like, super, whoever this extra was is getting really... In what? In uh, the next Batman. Oh, okay, the The, Batman versus Superman? The one that has everybody in it, has, like, Aquaman, I think Cyborg makes an appearance. Well, I didn't know about that. You didn't? Are you talking about the Batman versus Superman? Yeah. Yeah. Justice? Okay. So there is a female Robin in the storylines, right? Female Robin in the comics. What's that? There's female Robin in the comics. Yeah, but there's like 30 Robins in the comics. There's about she's five. also like a teenager, though, in the comics. Right? She's like 12 or 13. Well, there's two females. There's uh. one from the alternate universe of Frank Miller's Dark Knight, and then there's a female Robin that was in the actual normal canon who was younger than, I think, the one in Dark Knight. You and Miles with the Batman trivia. Mm, Batman trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Does Batman have the best villains? I feel like he, I think his, his, yeah. his gallery is pretty the awesome. Most interesting and diverse. Yeah, they're it, in depth too. Like I, I honestly didn't know about this until Miles started talking to me about it in his giant Batman boner. But like each of the the <laughs> each of the villains have their own yeah. above average <laughs> keyword giant. Yeah. <laughs> each of the villains have their own backstories. Like yeah. I really like Harley Quinn's story. That's crazy. Yeah, her little that she was a psychiatrist yeah. and she went oh, crazy. Oh, the female yeah, the, she, interviewing the Joker. No, yeah. and then she fell in love with him. There's yeah. some buzz around this female uh, she's a she's only done minimal acting she's mostly a model but she's uh, in the rounds that I think they're gonna cast her as Harley Quinn Harley Quinn and uh, I don't know if because uh, Harley Quinn has such a famous voice well from the animated series she yeah. has yeah. Voice. yeah exactly yeah. I think she was uh, a Mr. guy bef- Jay. Mr. I think she was Jay. A, that, that character was a male <laughs> before that like Harley was in the first Batman movie he was the male hench, like the lead male henchman of the Joker. From the, I, I think the animated series was the first debut of the girl Harley Quinn. I have Quinn. to check that. I'm not so sure we'll about that. I mean, but I don't know for sure. Gus. Anyway, we're going to... And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up right now. The voice of Harley Quinn in the animated show was the, vo- was the woman who created the character. What do you oh, mean, really? created the character? Like, actually wrote yeah, it in the comics? Yeah, she's the person who devised the character of Harley Quinn. And for the animated series or for the comics? For the comic. Interesting. And then she went on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to double check that right yeah, now. Our fact checker's spouting stuff before he's checking <laughs> it. <laughs> nice. I really want to try to uh, talk more about a little bit more about films this week. Uh, the last couple weeks have been so, like, over-hemorrhaging with Marvel, 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 and DC. And it's just been, like, first it was nothing but rumors. Then it was, like, a huge slate of announcements. Uh, someone tweeted at me. It was just a picture. Like, all these comic news, all this comic news is just a person drowning. Drowning, like a gif of someone drowning. Or I uh, maybe I don't know if it was there they're really drowning, but you know what I mean. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just I didn't want anyone to have like, you know, like faces of death kind Panic of thing. Attack. What's gonna happen in the gif? <laughs> well you always see those gifs on Reddit and you're like, that's funny, but did they die? It's a little weird. The answer is usually yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we totally we totally went completely off the rails. I guess the whole boat I was just like, I didn't want to look like some scruffy homeless guy when I meet Natalie Dormer. So we'll, we'll <laughs> that was we'll, a long <laughs> tangent. Yeah, we, yeah. we, uh, we came back, everybody. That anecdote, man. Nice. Well, uh, you know, worth well, it. What films are we talking about, JJ? Well, we got a few we're going to talk about. Uh, I want to talk let, about let, me, let me clarify my incorrect statement first ah. before you continue. Uh, I guess she was a friend of the, per- of the person who created the character. And the he voice wa- actress was yeah, the and he friend. wanted her to voice it because he based the character That's on still her. still cool. And wow. the character originated in the comic. Correct. Okay. As a girl. Yes. Yeah. Good to know. Sorry. All right. Go ahead. Just oh, here, here in a moment. You're doing your job, Gus. Thank you. I here in a couple it. of moments, we're going to be joined by uh, some ladies from Forever Fest. Before we do, I want to ask you, Gus, Steve Jobs movies, do we have enough of them? No, I mean you got to have one for every type of iPod, right? So you got yeah. <laughs> the first movie was like the iPod classic. You got to keep going until you get like to the iPhone. No, the, the first movie, the finale was when uh, Bill Gates, yeah, Bill Gates invested in Apple. 
Are you right. talking about the Pirates of Silicon yeah, the Valley? Noah Wiley yeah, Noah Wiley one. Yeah. And who is that? Is Michael Anthony Hall, right? I don't remember. Played, I'll, I'll, I think I'll remember Bill Gates. Yeah. I'll remember Noah Wiley. I don't remember who the Bill Gates yeah, was. Yeah, Noah Wiley from ER. That was, a, that was a good movie. I think that was made for TV. It was, yeah, it, it was made for TV. TV. It was really good. The special effects were a little silly at times, well, but it was, it was a good movie. And then there was Jobs with Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, we're not talking about that, though. Yeah, and then poor Steve, <laughs> and poor Steve Wozniak got like, uh, he was uh, he was played by um, Josh Gad. Josh Gad. Uh, and Wozniak's actually a pretty, like, in-shape guy. Is he? Oh, is he? Yeah, if you look at those photos from, like, the 70s and 80s. Oh. Like, he was a cool guy. He's a pretty big guy now. But they, they, I mean, but, like, in the time back then, he, he's not that big now. And he was, he was he was never the jolly, fat, funny guy. But every time they, like, they, they do the Steve, like, the Bill Gates, I mean, the Steve Jobs movie, they always make Steve Wozniak, like, this kind of comedic, chubby guy. And, he's, and he wasn't. Yeah, the, it's so funny the way, uh... The way Steve Jobs described Wozniak, he basically says Wozniak made the Apple II and then he had nothing to do with Apple ever again. Like, yeah. that's not a credit. But my favorite Wozniak thing, he was being interviewed on some national news uh, program about the Ashton Kutcher movie mm -hmm. and he was criticizing it. He was like, this isn't right, this isn't right, this is right, it's just really bad. And then the interviewer was like, aren't you being paid though to work on the Aaron Sorkin movie as an advisor? And he was like, well, yeah. <laughs> but. So, of course, I got to come here and say my Cheerios are better than these Cheerios. That's crazy. Uh, well, so the big news is that going back to like being a chubby, funny Steve Wozniak, Seth Rogen is being in talks to possibly Steve Wozniak. And it was originally Christian Bale yeah. that was going to play Steve Jobs. And for a long time, they wanted to be David Fincher directing it, Aaron Sorkin writing it, very much like The Social Network. When did it change to Danny Boyle? Uh, well, Fincher made it pretty much impossible for them to, to agree to have him as direct because he was like, I want this amount of money and I want all control over all marketing and all posters. The same way he kind of does what Gone Girl and like, he did that with the Dragon Tattoo as well. Um, and uh, they were like, no, we can't give you that. So he gave him like a really tall order, almost purposefully so he didn't have to direct the movie. So they have Danny Boyle from uh, Train Spotting. Yeah. Uh, and 28 Days Later and all those, and Sunshine all these great movies and uh, but the thing is so Christian Bale I wrote this Christian Bale has bailed yeah I know he backed out because he didn't think he was right for the part and Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio also has backed out yeah he that's, was the first one to back out I think that's a hard role like I think it's almost you feel like you're doomed to fail because Jobs was so insane and emotional and people hold him to some godlike figure yeah it's just I mean like being Batman after George Clooney Man, whatever, I could do that. Yeah. But, you know, just trying to step Brandon in can and do, do that, that it, that's tough. Well, a lot of people don't know this about the, the, the Steve Jobs movie that's being shopped around right now, the, the one Danny Boyle's directing, is the whole movie takes place at three, yeah, three Apple yeah. announcements. Well, yeah. it leads up to three Apple announcements. Well, no, it's, it's, it's literally the, that day, the announcement, and what happens on stage and what happens behind the stage. Just three different moments. I'm looking forward to the loan that it's written by Aaron Sorkin. He is very good. I'm yeah. I'm addicted to his writing. Well, I mean, The Social Network is mostly just legal proceedings at tables, yeah. uh, and with flashbacks to like kind of back up the story. But I'll, I mean, the whole thing ends with like Rashida Jones talking to Mark Zuckerberg about like how the whole thing's going to turn yeah. out and how much money he's going to have to pay. It's like it's very low key, but the dialogue is well, so yeah, snappy. Newsrooms the same way. The Wire was the same way. Like just. Fast, yeah, West top. Wing. It's fun because he basically turns 500 pages of screenplay into 150. Did I say The Wire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant West Wing. Those West W yeah. TV shows. <laughs> um, so it's like I think I feel like it's basically it's like oh man this this movie's gonna be five hours long. It's like no Sorkin wrote it. It's like oh well this movie's gonna be 20 minutes because yeah. everybody's gonna like Gilmore Girls it and just talk like. Well, his first, I think I think his the, his big first foray into like awards and becoming a name name. I think it was Few Good Men, right? Is that, I'm pretty sure that's is that Sorkin? Sorkin. I'm pretty sure that's Sorkin. Sorkin. Yes, so that is Sorkin. All right, cool. Uh, all right, uh, here uh, we're about to be joined by the ladies from Forever Fest. They're going to tell us about this awesome event going down at Alamo Draft House. But uh, before we do, I want to let everyone know that we did take another photo for the fo the fake movie poster thumbnail. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, but we tweeted it. If you see it and you're pretty good at Photoshop, actually, even if you're really bad at Photoshop, that's probably even better. Go ahead, take your stab at it. We want to see what you have to offer. And we kind of went with a cheesy romantic comedy back when like Matt McConaughey I don't McConaughey think, I don't think it came was. out very cheesy looking there was a five minute debate about how creepy I should look at it <laughs> I think it ended up being more on the creepy side of the spectrum I think we all three ended up looking like the creepy side of the spectrum no I, well I mean you're definitely like reaching I think I, I, think I, I, think I won't play I didn't Brandon. know what to do because I'm like the third guy in the series yeah you know no. it's like the third guy in any movie has to be like the weird one see I, I it's thought Zach Galifianakis that Will Ferrell in old school it's the guy it's like, from something I something like <laughs> Have you seen a uh, new girl? 
I thought you were like the Nick from New Girl. I tried. I can't do New Girl. Oh, yeah, speaking like of Nick, Nick from New really? Girl. Yeah, it's like those guys, it the roommates really are bad. so obnoxious. It's nice. really? I love oh, New Girl. I, love I watched it. the one with Alan uh, Richardson, the one yeah. who's... Richardson. The, Richardson, thank you. Um, mm. The actor who's in Laser Team. And I thought she was great. And uh, I thought he was great. But the, the roommates, man, I couldn't take Roommates it. are the love, best part they, of the yeah, show. Yeah, they realize yeah. like that they're the best part. And they She's the worst changed part. the show completely. Yeah, it's, it's called New Girl, but it's mostly about the dudes. Yeah, it's kind of weird. it is I guess, now. Anyway, I, I saw Let's Be Cops uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the movie that has two of the main guys from New Girl in it. And it was not very good. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's real. It's it's it, it, it's the whole notion is a movie about these guys that dress up like real police oh, officers, yeah, right. drive around in a real police about. car, and think it's fun, you know. And it's very illegal. But th there's so many like times in the movie where reality doesn't make sense. You're like, there's no way you can do that, and that would be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's weird because it also has one of the actors, uh, the coach from Twenty One Jump Street, and he's playing one of the main cops. It's a little weird. It's just like. It's oh, not a good um, movie. It didn't do Rob, so well. Rob Riggle. Rob, Rob Riggle. Riggle's awesome. There you go. Okay, so over in the video store now, we have Miss Sarah and Miss Brandy. Hey, ladies. Hi, hi guys. You're blocking. Oh, is that Mr. Ryan Gosling? Oh, I didn't know yes, we had the Goss we don't here. Want to block him. I loved you Ryan. on uh, the uh, the Disney show that you were on. Oh, look, Ryan Gosling for in a Disney show. Mickey Ro Mouse Club. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, was he? What? Mm -hmm. Also, one of my favorite episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? That's true, the pinball one. I remember watch it. I think so. No, so, it's uh, it's when he's it's the mortician episode. Ah, there you go. Oh, Sorry, I was adorable. So you ladies are doing your second ever I forever fest, I believe. Nights. That's right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it and why it's so cool. You want to start? Definitely. It is um, at the Alamo Draft House, which you guys love. So um, come out and have a girly weekend with us, which is a slumber party of films, events, parties. Panels. Yeah, it's, it's basically a, a whole weekend so we can celebrate all of our like pop culture girly obsessions without shame. Um, it's definitely a slumber party, except you have to leave at 2 a.m. So yes. Yes. <laughs> you can't yes. stay the night. It's not like a lock in in high school, unfortunately. And not you, yet. You can, uh, like, the, the list of movies you're playing really kind of sums up the fill that you guys are going for. So, what, what are some of the things you guys have this year? Um, well, we're starting out on Friday night with a screening of Mean Girls with a reunion of some of the cast. Ooh. Um, you can't yeah, we're really excited this. about that. Uh, Ten year reunion. Do you want to tell them who we have coming? Yeah, Jonathan Bennett, who is Aaron Samuels, who's the hot love interest in it. Aaron Samuels. He looks good with his hair pushed back. Yes, definitely. Jason, whose name is Daniel Del Santo, he kept um, telling Lacey Chabert that he couldn't hang out with her in Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah. And Damien, who is Daniel Franzesi. Yeah, who is, you know, I think everyone's favorite, so. And then Men's Bodies in Cinema, which you guys are seeing on screen now, that we celebrate as well at an event called the Wild Brunch, which is why <laughs> Ryan Gosling is here with us today as well. Yeah, the Wild Brunch is a clip show dedicated to the hottest men in Hollywood. So it's organized by really scientific categories like hot guys shirtless, hot guys talking about their feelings, important things like that. Abs. Yeah, lots of apps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where can people find out more about uh, Forever Fest? Uh, we have our website, foreverfest.com, which has the whole schedule, and you can buy tickets and just get all the inside scoop. And then last year you guys had like a, it was like super John Hughes-esque, I think, right? Like, mm -hmm. what, were, what, what, what was the big uh, debut last year? Uh, well, I think one of our, we did two kind of big film screenings. One, we did a screening of Empire Records with a Rex Manning Day party afterwards. And then we did a screening of 16 Candles with two of the cast members. Um, so that was like a great way to launch the fest because it really is sort of a nostalgic, like, what did we love watching as we grew up and what do mm -hmm. we still love? What are we still obsessed with? Um, so what do we do at sleepovers naturally that we can do on the big screen at the Alamo Draft House? Yeah, so, and we're also bringing back a couple of events from last year, including the Wild Brunch. We're mm -hmm. also bringing back Dance mm -hmm. uh, which is like karaoke, but with dancing. It's amazing. Brad's doing the Spicier Girls. Fox nice. PR. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's basically uh, live performers dancing to routines from famous dance movies and music videos uh, while the scene or music <laughs> video plays behind them. So it's, yeah, it's basically like achieving my dream of living in a dance movie. It's nice. our debates, basically. Well, it sounds really awesome, and I believe you ladies have our movie quote of the week. We do. Yes. Let's you hear say it, it together. Definitely. Okay, ready? Yes. Cold, Cold shiny, shiny, hard, hard plastic. plastic. There you go. Cold. I don't know it. 
A <laughs> mid turny over here going. She's so excited. She's got a mouthful of candy. She's like, oh, I know it. I know it. Is it Terminator? No. <laughs> <laughs> they can't tell you, Brandon, not until oh. the end of the show. Toy Story. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, Toy so much. Story. For If you guys need more information, we're going to be putting it underneath the video. But uh, check it out. Forever Fresh right here. Austin, Texas. Fun times will be had by all. And there may be some painting of toenails and pajama pants. I don't know. What, I don't know. Hello what fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where are the PJs? Yeah. You can wear your roomy PJs there. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ryan Gosling. Plug. <laughs> I think Ryan Gosling said as much in that interview as he did in All of Drive. <laughs> <laughs> he says yes. less than only only God forgives actually. Then drive. Eyes are sparkling though. Yeah. Always sparkling. Always He's so sparkling. shiny. <laughs> Is he from Twilight? So, Aaron, yeah. Aaron uh, Ruby, the show that you do the voice for Blake, just wrapped nice. this week. We went and yes. had a big, awesome event uh, at the Alamo Draft House, and we showed it on the silver screen in a bunch of different locations. That was a lot of fun. How is it for you to be leaving the, the show? Is it sad? Oh, I mean, no, not, you're, you're not, not leaving. leaving your show. Show. <laughs> I'm not leaving. We didn't want to let you know. <laughs> Blake dies. Blake dies. You know that's now. <laughs> that's on the front page of Reddit right now. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Zek is dead. Uh. <laughs> not your character. <laughs> yeah, you. I guess, l let me rephrase the question. You more you excited about next year? I'm. I'm really excited. There were actually a lot of parts at the end of of Ruby that I had either forgotten about or hadn't seen, and it was really exciting to kind of see it with fresh eyes. <laughs> I got reminded of a line that I did that I recorded, just like a stupid little line, um, but recorded like seven months ago at the yeah. old office. And when I was sitting next to Patrick, and I didn't know I, I did that line, we heard it, and we both looked at each other, and he was like. Is that, is that you? I was like, I think so. I don't know. Because you do stuff in so far, far yeah. back. It's always such a bummer to have someone ask me, like, hey, tell me one of your favorite lines or talk like Blake. And I was like, I haven't said a Blake line in probably <laughs> like half a year. I'm really sorry. My memory's not that great. I sound brooding and dark. Yeah. Every time I do, I always say something like, sure. And they're like, well, you don't have to if you don't want to. I was like, no, that was the line. <laughs> but Mon no, it was a lot of fun. I'm excited. To Monty had my favorite line in the whole, the whole movie. What was this season. line? It was when they were all in the library arguing and playing that Risk yeah. game. And then I think Carrie's character was just like, I thought oh, the library yeah. is for reading. And then Monty's character just in the background. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> or, or Nora, like similar, like in a similar scene. She's like, women. women. Yeah, yeah, I think Nora steals like every scene she's in. I, lo she's I love adorable. Nora. She's so funny. And then yeah. we're talking about, uh, before the show ends, John, I'm going to talk to you. You've got the new uh, game show coming yeah. out this Thursday. The Thursday. Game show. So we'll talk a little bit about that, about that at the end of the show. Teasing. But right now, I want to talk about Chappie, which is a movie yeah. I've been following for a while, yeah. just because I heard about Di Antward. Gus, you know who Di Antward is? No, can't He's see. I do. I'm sorry. I'm, fight, I'm fighting with my microphone right now. Give me just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> frantic. <laughs> it's a dead ant. Uh, a Slumdog Millionaire guy. Uh, at, in the newsroom. It's, uh, I think it's South African for the answer. I think that's what the or the word. I think it's what it translates what? to. Die Antwoord. It's a. They're they're a rap group. I guess you call them rap. They're pretty crazy. Oh, it's a Yolan Yolandi like and Ninja. Chick. Yeah. I saw the trailer and I was like. They've been doing their videos. Their music videos are frightening. Um, but they're they're, weird. they're they're really big. Uh, and like in the the hip and indie and hip hop scene, I guess whatever. But what's interesting is okay, so Neil Blom Blomkamp is Blom a Blom Camp. Bl okay, Neil Blomkamp who did uh, District Nine, which District I really Nine. liked. Uh, I did not see Elysium. You should not. I heard it wasn't that good. I heard <laughs> it looks good, but he's got some big hip hop thing going on because. Uh, Matt Damon was the lead in Elysium, yep. and it was supposed to be originally Eminem, which we've talked about before. Elysium. Oh, well, yeah. I would like to see that. That would have made it even worse. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I really sorry, like sorry. it. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I enjoyed 8 Mile. 8 Mile was great. I enjoyed 8 Mile. I did not think that uh, Eminem could have made Elysium better. Oh, uh, I The movie seen itself Elysium. was bad, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, but I, I think Matt Damon is a better actor than Eminem. Eminem. Uh, Just yeah. sorry. That's, I, well, also, it is his job. Also a better rapper. A lot of people don't know, but he can spit those rhymes. Matt Damon? Matt Damon. He didn't do the singing voice for Euro Trip. Oh, that was awful. Oh, really? That wasn't you him just, singing. You know the reason he's in Euro Trip is because the guy who directed know. it was like Johnny his friend know. in college or something. Yeah. And they just happened to be in Europe at the same time. Yep. And they're like, you should come make an, a cameo, man. But uh, I'm really excited about Chappie. Um, you would be if you hadn't seen Elysium. I probably. Exactly. <laughs> I am too. Like, I'm, I'm hoping that, that, that uh, Neil Blomkamp isn't going to be like, go the route of like uh, M. Night Shyamalan. He has, he's had his good film and now he's done. S so what's this movie about? Uh, here's a few. It's interesting because when I first heard about it, I heard it was about this robot uh, that gets kind of kidnapped or like taken by this gang, which I'm guessing is Yolandi and Ninja, and then like kind of used to do bad things. Like they use him to 
you know, do theft and big burglaries and stuff. Um, but the way the trailer plays it, like it's almost like this bicentennial man, like creation of artificial yeah. intelligence. Artificial intelligence. It's like has everything to learn. you everything you loved about Data from yeah. Star Trek. But when you first explained it to me, like he gets kidnapped by a gang, mm. all I could think of is I've seen this movie. Before it was Short Circuit Two, <laughs> and the robot was named Johnny Five. Yeah, when he was kidnapped, no disassemble. By the <laughs> yeah. There he is. There he goes, oh, Johnny God. Five. The similarities are crazy. Except I don't think Steve Gutenberg's in this one, or was he in the? He wasn't. Yeah, the this one is the favorite. Yeah, this there is when you go. he got graffitied by his friends, and he's like rapping. Wow. Yeah, Short Circuit 2 was the Fisher Stevens movie. I don't think yeah, the I think Oscar award winning. Yeah, I think Fisher Steve Gutenberg had moved on and had bigger wait, things. Wait, Fisher to do. Stevens was in Lost as well. Uh, wait, what else is Fisher Steve? What did Fisher Stevens Mario win the Oscars? Brothers. He what was he, in Mario Brothers. What do you want? Oh, he won the Oscar for The Cove. Wait, okay, what was he in Mario Brothers? He was the Goomba. Really? <laughs> yeah, or it wasn't, I don't it, know if, Iggy. he didn't really turn into a Goomba. He turned into, he de evolved into a lizard. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, those are the Goombas. <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 those, those it looked like were the Goombas. I know they didn't look like them, but those were well, the, the Goombas. Well, the reason that this uh, the Chappie got on my radar earlier was because when I found out that the, these musicians were being put in the movie, and they're such weird characters, I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Uh, and then I found out they had to completely alter the storyline or Ninja's character storyline. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if his like character dies probably early into the Why? movie because he was such a fucking hassle on set oh. like he was throwing shit around he was acting like such a diva he was hitting on everybody he was sending like nude photos to like women of on the staff that just means you don't get to come back to the sequel <laughs> maybe but i heard they had to really like change his word like word on the internet was there they were rechanging his storyline and yeah, everybody too. says steven seagal is the worst yeah he's the most difficult to work with what's his face who was uh uh Rhodes in the first iron man he didn't come back to oh, iron Terrence man because they and now I, he's like doing tv and stuff i heard he was a uh, pretty difficult to well deal he with. had just won the oscar uh for uh what's that song what's that movie oh, it's hard oh, out there for yeah, a pimp it was uh, hustle and flow hustle and flow yeah, Hustle was and that Float. It? Yeah, that was I it. never saw Hustle and Float, it was but really I did. Good. But I did see Black Snake Moan, and I fucking love that movie. It's got like some Tarantino old uh, like southern. I think that's Richie. isn't that Samuel L. Jackson and Christina. That's Ricci? the it's the white chick on a chain movie. Richie, yeah. did you ever Richie. see the Rain Wilson SNL no where idea. he did like Rain Wilson? It was like him on the chain and underwear. Yeah. <laughs> It's really funny. In uh, in Chappie, am I wrong, or is Charlotte Copley the voice of Chappie? He might be, because because Blomkamp, Blomkamp uses him for a lot of stuff. He was in Charlotte recent... Copley is the voice of Chappie, right? Oh and wow! He, and he was and he was in the lead for Disney Night. So I guess he's his lucky charm. Yeah, and he's gone off to do some random things. He's in I think some PlayStation show that uh, Powers he's in show. Powers. He did. He was in Maleficent. It, I didn't know he was in Maleficent. I know yeah. he was also in A Team. He was in eighteen. He was fantastic in eighteen. I, yeah, I never. He saw did him. like a, a normal American accent through all of eighteen, but then to 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 portray a, a news reporter, he came out with his like South African accent for a little while. It was pretty that, funny. That's pretty awesome. Is that more of a recent trend of directors just using the same actors in every movie? I, I know it's a like recent Paul trend. Thomas Anderson, people have been doing Judd it forever. Like, like Wes Anderson, like Scorsese used to use Tim De Niro Burton. all the time. Now he uses DiCaprio all the time. What's the name of the? No, but not Pixar. just one actor. Like I'm What's talking that? like. What's the name of the Pixar uh, Lucky Charm guy? The guy who does the. Oh. Uh, oh, from Ratzinger. Cheers. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll look it up. John Ratzinger. John, yeah, John Ratzinger. He's the yeah. mailman. Hey, Norm. One. Yeah. yeah, he's Norm. Yeah, he's well, in every he's single Pixar. Guy. Let's that take a moment for a second, guys. Let's talk about our uh, guys that are helping us out with the show. Ham, it's Nature Box. Right? He's Ham and Toys. Yeah. Aaron, let us know what's going on with Nature Box. Okay. Two words, folks. Free snacks. <laughs> 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 I don't know what voice I'm, so I'm going to use right until I say it. Week. I'm going to give you the chance to get free stuff that's good for you. Drop the candy bar, drop the potato chips, and get good wholesome snacks at naturebox.com. Naturebox has the best munchies, and I don't feel guilty about eating them because they're better for me. Zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. Zero grams trans fat, and no high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with no added sugar and without gluten ingredients. So in the, so in the day when I'm sluggish and kind of grouch, I grab some baked sweet potato fries from Naturebox or Doc Coco Omen. <laughs> Nice. Dark cocoa. I can't say cocoa. Say, cocoa. say John. Say cocoa. Cocoa? cocoa or Almonds. cacoa? Great for the noms and great for you. Now I want to give you the chance to try Nature Box for free with the trial box featuring five of the most popular snacks. To start your free trial, go to naturebox.com slash screenplay. Start snacking smarter, go to naturebox.com slash screenplay to get a free trial box of delicious treats. Wow. You lasted like eight <laughs> seconds. If even that, I'm being generous. You're 
with like how donkey. Eight seconds like, is a long time. Oh gosh, right? it's like a Borderlands character. I guess eight seconds is a long time. That's how long Aaron. you have to ride a bull, right? In the movie. Uh, in the movie? I can last eight seconds. There's a movie called Eight Seconds. <laughs> yeah, uh, with a uh, Luke Perry. Luke Perry. Yeah. About uh, riding riding cattle and shit. Uh, okay, so we can all rejoice. Everyone, internet. It's going to be okay. Why? Michael Bay is not directing the next Transformers oh, movie. Oh, no! Bummer. Why does there have to be another Transformers movie? That's a good question, You know too. why? I know that. Money. Who do you think uh, would be a good replacement? No a one. three-year-old child? Does it have to happen? <laughs> <laughs> then there's an explosion. Someone, I was yeah. talking to and somebody. And then the Optimus Prime shows up. <laughs> well, did you ever see Chris? Someone, was anybody recording that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen Damaris when, he's, when we were talking about Face Off and he was like, the whole movie, it was like it was written by some kid. Like, this guy's a robber <laughs> and this guy's a policeman. He takes his face off. <laughs> okay, so I was reading the thing about, about Michael Bay talking about his new film, the Benghazi film. That's right, 13 Hours. And the, the, the whole article I was reading was fine until the end where it talked about how Michael Bay described the film. This is how he described the film in that it's not... Transformers, but it's still in the same category of the high action films. I'm like, the Benghazi incident's gonna be high action like Transformers. I don't think that's yeah. how it went down. I'm sure plenty of stuff, bad stuff happened because people die and everything like that, but, but I don't it, think there was like uh, like entire Walker. city shattering explosions that you know, well, you involved. There. I guess I wasn't. You <laughs> there, no, I wasn't. Sean. It's like I am totally speaking you out of see turn. The machine. And I apologize. It's like his bastardization of Pearl Harbor. Like I, at one point, I think everyone was like, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, but there. that's like. Pearl Harbor was like, I mean, yeah, he's totally like soap like, opera it up. Yeah, but like the what amount of destruction do? that happened in Pearl Harbor. I, I'm what? sorry, maybe I just wasn't reading up on Benghazi. What did he do much. wrong with Pearl Harbor? Oh, he just made it a stupid movie. He made he made it into Armageddon. It, like I think at one point people were like, with "Oh, the Pearl love Harbor, interests, this is going to be like a Saving Private Ryan kind of thing or whatever." But it was totally like just bullshit. You know, no. it was no. it was a lot of fluff. He's got he's got one. Really okay, so Armageddon's fine in my book, but he's got one I mean, great, good. one great movie that I really the enjoyed rock. that I wish Everyone he would loves do. The Rock. Right? The Rock was yeah. was good. Was the Island? I oh, really, really enjoyed the Island. Yeah, mm. I didn't stop. like the Island. That movie You're bombed. You're a fact checker, that's, not that, an opinion giver. That's the one movie. <laughs> that's the one Michael Bay movie that like <laughs> bombed at the box office. It did, and. Since they don't think that many people s have seen it, they use a lot of the footage they from that movie it. in his other movies. See, we were talking about the science of movies on the podcast. This is a great point. The island establishes this rule that are we talking about Lost? No, uh. <laughs> genetically clones can't fall in love. And you're like, all right, I accept all of these rules. Let's watch this movie. And at the end, the two characters just start falling in love. And you're I like, I don't think they ever said they were incapable of it. Is yeah. that they were like inclined to to stay uh, I'm pretty uh, immature? Sure, gen I'm pretty sure it was. They just can't. If like, you don't know, something that The happen. Island is a movie with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson that is very, there's a lot of white in it. Wait a minute. <laughs> there is a movie with Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson, and I have not seen You've this not or heard it. about this ever. It's fantastic. You're talking with your mouth full. <sighs> I'm sorry. There are almonds <laughs> in my mouth, and I mean. It's got uh, uh, a Jumani uh, Hinsu. Is that how you pronounce his name? Mm. Um, he's, uh, he's one of the mercenaries. And then uh, uh, Game of Thrones. What's his face? Ed Stark. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ned Beam. Stark? Sean Bean. Sean Bean. Sean Bean. He's in it. So, uh, supposedly, from what I'm reading here, Michael Bay has said that Jonathan Liebsman may be the director for the next Transformers movie. Who's that? Is, that sounds familiar. Did he He's, do his Underworld stuff? He did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Wrath of the Titans, the Battle Los Angeles, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, and a few other things. So Don't his, like, stop all, naming all off his, so like, many good films. Dunes or Sand Dunes, or whatever his pro like his production company is called, like all his movies that he produced, pretty much. Correct. Okay, then the question is: I think is, he's a great pick for Transformers. <laughs> yeah. If um, I was running Transformers, I, that's absolutely I, I can, who I would hire. I can't wait until the new Ninja Turtles comes out, like on Redbox or DVD, so we can make it the movie book club of the week and just shred it. No, let me edit it before. I'll edit a version no, okay. of it and then watch that. Um. I, say I will say I will say about Teenage Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Turtles, like it actually wasn't bad if they had just completely gotten rid of the the April, April O'Neil part. That's like, exactly what I said. The actual Ninja Show Turtles up and, twenty minutes later. Yeah. Well, but even like the like they only even a, even after the big opening of April O'Neil, they still only intercut the turtles every once in a while, and it was still a bunch Dude, of as her. As soon as April O'Neil started Megan talking Fox, about how Megan Fox, Megan Fox, as soon as she recognized the turtles and was like, "Wait, I know these turtles," and it cut to the home video where she like raised them, I was like, "Fuck you!" I never said well, Megan Fox. I just said the story. No, was just, I'm not trying. Was, I'm, no, I'm bringing my own side. To this. The, every time it's you see turtles on yeah. screen in that movie, I think it's gold. 
Yeah. Like, I think it's like if you tune everything out and you just see turtles and you ignore all the Megan Fox stuff at the end, which is absolutely pointless. Yeah. And it's ruining all the great turtle finale <laughs> scene. I want Megan Fox to be in 13 hours just for no reason. I just wanted to be there. Just, in the Benghazi. Just, get, just to get <laughs> shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like in the middle of nowhere. It's high action. It's high action, yeah. you guys. You ever like hate a character in a movie and you, you wish that they left that movie and walked into like a horror movie and immediately got, got killed? killed? Like yeah. 500 Days of Summer? Last Action Hero. Uh, like who's in 500? Was it Zoe Deschanel? Yeah, you're talking about Zoe, Zoe Deschanel. Deschanel. Like when she walked away at the end of that movie, I was like, I hope she I hope she walks into an episode Kevin of Law and is. Order yeah. and is that like first person Or killed. just walks into like the Saw franchise. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. Like and, let's talk about other. It. Let's talk about other dumb ideas. Uh, maybe not. I. Maybe it's because I'm married to the original and like T2 like has such a big place in my heart. But Terminator, like they're redoing it. The Gen yeah. Size, awful fucking title, by the way. Uh, is it Gen Size or Genesis? It's, it's like. What is, I know it's spelled with a Y. It? It's like, Gus, is it Genesis? I'm sure it's pronounced I, I, Genesis. I, I think it's going to be Genesis. It's an extra interesting question. I hadn't heard anybody ask it yet, but I'm, I'm going to go with Genesis. Yeah. Genesis is a cool name. Uh, but it's spelled all stupid, though. That's yeah. just, it's like with a Y. Don't talk about a movie spelled wrong. Why? We're Laser making team. a movie that's been spelled yeah. wrong. <laughs> 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 that's funny. Um, but yeah, so the whole storyline with this is that Sarah Connor, who's played by Amelia Clark, which everyone knows as Daenerys. Daenerys yep. Um uh, so this is how they find a way to shoehorn Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the Terminator movies is they make him this biological Terminator that can age and he's the, he's like this older version and he, he's and the one who raises he raises Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor she is raised by a Terminator and he and she he's calls him Pops that's kind of how they're retconning it so, I don't know man sounds kind of weird well, that's what the EW article was talking about how it's it's the retelling of the original story of you know a a Terminator going back in time that kind of thing and going back to Sarah Connor yeah. but instead of Sarah Connor being the you know doe-eyed you know naive girl that she is at the beginning of the film she's like trained her whole life by pop yeah. and is like badass you know chick that kind of thing. so that's the twist okay let me ask you okay so I never saw Terminator Salvation but it, which is the probably the Terminator movie that like deserves the most to be terminated? Terminator Three or Terminator Salvation? They're both Salvation. bad. No, Salvation. they're both they're both bad. I, I rewatched Terminator Three, I think like a week and a half ago, and as I was watching it, I thought this is like bad fan fiction. It's like yeah. if you had found someone who was a fan of the series and wrote a bad Terminator script, that would have been it. <laughs> I I like Terminator Three in a total popcorn flick dumb way. I mean, they, oh, it's definitely a different like flavor than the first. Oh two. no, it's like a it's like a it's six flag. It's movie, like a six yeah. flags ride. It's just crazy. The first stunts. one scared me as a kid. Oh, uh, the first like, one, the Terminator character both, both was scary. Are, yeah, both of them are terrifying. Part two is They're amazing. Yeah, but so three is just kind of dumb. I got to give them credit for the fact that they fucking ended the world. Like you know, like you don't, like at that time you didn't see a lot of movies where they. Uh, someone always saves a day, and those and the missiles never launch. Oh, oh man, in the woods. <laughs> that scene in Terminator Two. That scene in Terminator Two, the dream sequence where, where she's everybody in the cage. gets nuked. That's terrifying. Yeah. But I, I, when I read this description, it felt like they were trying to take the best part of the Terminator series, which I do think is the relationship between the Terminator and John Connor, mm -hmm. and remake that. Like to me, it feels like a remake, except they're just mixing some of the ingredients. Like yeah. let's make a machine a father figure. So I like that in the second movie. So at least going into this, I'll have high hopes. But that that I think is to me the whole Terminator franchise. I'll give it a go. Are, it's it's got a great cast. I mean, come on. Are Matt, they really trying to do like a what am I, remake, what am I thumbs up remake for? type thing? Or are they yeah, just, they're trying to reboot the whole thing. Oh, okay. Thing. So because yeah. I know a lot of the big fad recently has been taking like older stuff and redoing them. Like Snow White at one point had two movies out at the same time of yeah, like Hunts different Man variations, and, that, yeah. and then Both The Wizard horrible. of Oz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw one on a plane and I couldn't. But escape combine it. them together. Are, yeah. are they just trying to do Shitstorm. that, or are they like straight up like this is the new Terminator? I think they're going to say this is canon. Who's making it? Uh, you know, I don't even know who the director is. There's I, one. Oh no, there's there's one Matt company. Smith? I mean, not not Matt Smith. I don't know if it's, uh, it's, it's say, Paramount. He's, he's, he's definitely not a director. Am I wrong, or did I see on the front EW cover that the doctor? is in yeah Matt Dr. Smith Who? we were just talking about that that he's in it yeah but he his his uh, little thing yeah, is there are question is. marks is like Matt Smith as who yeah. which is kind of funny well they give away everyone else's role but it. then he, they don't give away I his role I don't, I don't know who's directing that actually um, here's something interesting oh, maybe go it ahead. is well Matt go Smith. ahead Brandon I was just making I, I think it might be Paramount there's one big company where basically the only thing they're interested in is making tentpole movies yeah they're just interested in franchise where they can over like a 20 year period make like five movies so yeah. that's why you just see 
the same stuff over and over and over, and they end up just reviving previous temples that they yeah. haven't had in the last Paramount 15 years. Paramount is the production company for Terminator Genesis. There you go. So here's yeah. something really cool. Fandango is doing their biggest promotion ever. It, it, when, you, when you put the value all set aside, it's come out to about $100,000. Uh, so what they're doing is for uh, to promote Interstellar. If you buy your ticket for Interstellar on Fandango, um, you're entered into a drawing, and you could win a trip on a private spaceship like uh yeah. dude hold on hold on i'm buying my tickets right now on, let me, let me dude, on a private spaceship just crashed last week that's what i'm saying that's incredibly they're all, frightening they're all private they're all private, they're all private air like yeah. uh like uh this is not nasa doing it no. so they're all these private organizations and they're all still relatively new yeah, yeah. so it's like early adopter mm. kind of thing that's that's an awful thing i remember yeah. a long time ago lance bass from nsync was going to be yeah. the first Gay? In no, no, he wasn't gay yet. <laughs> he, uh, he wasn't, wasn't gay, gay yet. yet. He was still experimenting. Uh, no, but so he was gonna be the first uh, space tourist. It was this big thing. He was just spending all this money. Yeah. He, he was always training with the Russians, and it all fell through. And I was just thinking, man, like, wouldn't it be so awesome if he went up to space and died? That's <laughs> nice. Because it's such. Because it's such. It, the, the fact that it's a tourist thing, I and mean, that's what I'm thinking about. This. It's too early to send someone up there. Wouldn't that be the biggest like? I would, how, I let, would, me, let me ask you a question. Fendi how do you kills. want to die? Old and forgotten in bed or as a dude strapped to a fucking rocket going to space? <laughs> <laughs> People are going to remember Dango. one of those. It's true. Dude, I would do I only have those two choices? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> wow. That's Interstellar comes out this week, doesn't it? It's uh, out yeah. today. They're showing it today. Well, yeah, but the wide release. Well, Why am what, I and, right and, here? And, and then Christopher Nolan will end up making the story about the guy that died in space, <laughs> and then uh, it all comes back, and I'd watch that the shit out of that movie. Is that the little girl who plays Rin Esme? I don't know. I th I don't know much about this movie. I, I have some friends saw it yesterday. I, I'm thinking that's Jessica. I think the girl grows up. I think what, what do they call her in the movie? It's uh, Murphy. Murphy's Law. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think that that's the young oh, that's Jessica right. Chastain. Yeah. Like right? Because like they show her later and she's all grown up. I'm not sure. Uh, Interstellar had the greatest teaser I have ever seen in the history of my life. Oh, it's so. Good. I didn't know what the movie was. I just saw Matthew McConaughey and he's like with his little girl and I was like, oh, I guess it's like a family film. <laughs> and then in the last like ten seconds. He goes into space and they don't know where he's going. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, completely threw me, put me through a loop. So, that was That's like me funny. with Nightcrawler. And then I was like, really disappointed that it wasn't an X Men movie. X Men movie. <laughs> Alan Cummings. But I will, but like, I've been pushing that movie he was so awesome. hard. awesome. I think that, uh, I Cummings? think that yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal is probably the it. first uh, in the running for an Oscar right now. As far as Oscar bait goes, as far as Oscar films out a few right now, coming Hold on, out what's going on here? Mini term. conversation. I'm trying to. I'm trying, trying to stop, I'm trying to stop the conversation. I'm sorry, we're just talking about Alan Cummings. <laughs> One at a time. There you go. Thank know, you. We're One. Not, we're not. We're King Gus. It was Brandon's fault. No, I tried to All stop. Right, really no one else wanted to talk. I, about I, it. Hold on, guys. I got to put the brakes on this because I got to talk about skivvies. That's right. Me undies. Now this is pretty awesome. I'm actually. Can we get a shot of this? I'm actually wearing some of their socks right now. It looks like a red and black camouflage thing. They're very nice. Uh, but I'm here to tell you about me undies. Aaron, why don't you hey, why don't you hold these up? I promise I haven't worn these. Brandon, you can hold that up. But let me tell you about me undies. Ninety percent. That's the percent of your life that you're in your underwear. <laughs> okay. Ninety percent. I, I don't know. That's a I'm lot of percent. I'm naked the second I'm home. And underwear gets old <laughs> fast. You know that feeling of putting on old saggy underwear? When I read this, I thought I said soggy. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> you need to know that. You need to know the feeling of great fitting underwear that is two times softer than cotton. You need to know about MeUndies.com. MeUndies is the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear, and it's insane how good they make you feel. They fit perfectly, they don't ride up on you, and they literally pull moisture from your skin so you stay cool. See, Aaron, you're feeling those right now. They actually do feel really nice. They're actually really soft. They've got a little front bulge, too, just for like... A little front bulge in case in case you have a pants tent going on. Oh my gosh, no, no Mother Teresa. No, Neil Patrick She's Harris... Jewish now. Neil Patrick Harris was doing this interview recently, and they're asking like people what they splurge on, like fashion-wise. Are you telling an anecdote in the middle of an ad read? Because it told me to. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Tell an interesting Let anecdote. him read the ad. <laughs> you shit. But uh, so Neil, I think Neil Patrick Harris was talking about like the only thing he splurges on is fancy underwear. That's, and it makes like complete that. sense. Like it totally changes your uh, outlook on the day, your attitude and everything. But uh, so just to let you know, MeUndies.com. They have cool styles for men and women that look great. Check out the photos yourself. MeUndies.com. <laughs> Quality skivvies that would usually retail for two times the MeUndies price. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a deal. 
No one's looking. Let's get away with this. Go to MeUndies.com slash screenplay and get 20% off your first order and get free shipping. Save even more when you buy a pack of them. They guarantee you're going to be happy with them or your first pair is free. Once you feel MeUndies on your body, you're never going back. But to get that 20% off, you have to go to MeUndies.com slash screenplay. So check that out. Ladies for your boyfriends or boys for your girlfriends. They've got lots of different, uh, you know, options. You can check it out. I really do love these. They're really awesome. I'm actually really happy that Blaine isn't on this week's episode because he was trying to steal all the, all really the, all the cool stuff. They have lady undies? Yeah, they have really Yeah, I'm nice. looking at it right now. Do yeah. they have, I'm, I'm, I'm putting an order together. Dude, do they, have, it, dude like, they are legit. You're taking them in a space, guys? They have lady, like... They have women's briefs and, like, and lace thongs. There you go. Ooh. I don't men? even know what that is. I don't know how to thongs? not have something in my butt anymore. <laughs> What's a lace thong? Ooh, never mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> I think we missed that. Yeah, Aaron was talking about... Are we going to talk about uh, brown bunny next? Oh, my God. I, it's, I, it's funny. <laughs> what is brown bunny? <laughs> brown bunny is a movie that's pretty dirty, and it ends with a real blowjob. <laughs> it's, it's uh Vincent. It's, Please oh, don't quote me. It's Chloe Savigny. And, Chloe Savigny uh, and the guy who directed it, Vincent Gallo. I yes, think. yes. There you go. <laughs> so there you go. It's funny because they gave us they, have, they gave us a bunch of shirts. And there's a small white, and Blaine was like, "Am I going to be on screenplay? Because I got to work out because it's a small shirt and it's really tight." Was that what he was talking about? <laughs> yeah. That Blaine. Emily is this? a special boy. <laughs> Emily, who's in charge of all of our merch. Um, she also kind of oversees, you know, who is posing in what picture, and she refuses to give Blaine any more small shirts. She doesn't want to give him smalls anymore. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's anyway, we're getting off topic. Too small. But before we go into television, I just want to talk about really quickly something that's really awesome. I don't want to talk about it too much. I just want to tell people what's happening. But Paul Rubens and Judd Apatow are getting together. Paul Rubens better known better known as Pee Wee. And he was also been in some other stuff like Blow. He's actually Get a really good old. actor. But yeah, he's old. He's been around for forever. Paul Rubens gave people like Fluffy. Lawrence Fishburne and Phil Hartman their start. They were all side characters on his uh, his big variety show. Not forget Mystery Men. Oh, that's oh right. He was gosh. the first guy in Mystery Men. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Uh, Paul Rubens and Apatow have just announced they're making a movie together. They have a director. They haven't said much. But Pee Wee's Big Adventure is one of my favorite movies. It's a Tim Burton. It's his first one. I'm really excited really? about another Pee Wee movie. I, I it's like that. that movie is nothing like his show. That movie yeah. is Tim Burton. It's totally. really hard for me to imagine a sequel that's not directed by Tim Burton. Well, there, there, there is one. There's Pee Wee's Big uh, Pee Wee. Pee- Big Top Pee Wee. Big Top Pee Wee. Beach Del Toro plays the Wolfman. Yes, correct. There what? you go. I never knew that the Pee Wee character was something that he got from his uh, his variety show. It was oh, a character yeah. he created on there as like the unfunny comedian yeah. who was like out for like auditions and that kind well, of thing you know, and then he got his own show yeah and then he yeah. turned that character into a franchise what's crazy about Pee Wee is that he was actually also the voice uh, he was this he was the original voice of Roger Rabbit right oh, really right yeah. I remember Did that they replaced him uh, yeah, they ended up going with someone else. They had a whole oh. other guy besides uh, Bob Hoskins either when they were doing the early test. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. So I'm excited about the Paul Rubens movie. And then also earlier we were talking about how Fifty Shades of Grey has come out. The star uh, has come out and said, there will be no gratuitous sex scenes. You will not be seeing my member. And I'm paraphrasing. He called it a todger. Well, that's a yeah, he does. called it a todger. Which I've never heard a, a penis called a todger. Well, now you have. I know. But uh, so a lot of girls are upset about this saying it's were they uh, really a expecting like straight up sex sex scenes i don't know I, yeah. I like really i can imagine it'll be like under the frame of the camera and you get the idea or maybe they're reacting but you won't see junk you can't see junk yeah the yeah. descriptions i've read imagining what that would look like on screen it's like yeah. i've seen that movie before i've seen thousands of those movies yeah. before <laughs> on three the minutes three minutes at a time yeah those just, <laughs> i i i think books like um, Fifty Shades of Grey. We've I've only read a couple of excerpts and stuff, but in the book form, they sound really hot and sexy. Yeah. But in gra- viewed form, graphic. it's it's just really messy, one. and it's not quite as sexy as it is in the book. Like, there's no way you could make a blowjob super super <laughs> just like clean and and delicate and graceful. Like they're trying Dude, to you make keep, it. You keep lighting yourself up with the worst sound bites. The show. <laughs> You're yes. talking about butt stuff, and now the cleanest blowjob. <laughs> there's a ton of books. There's a whole genre. Um, <laughs> cleanest blowjob. Yeah, you know those books at the grocery store when like Fabio's on the cover. Yeah, yeah. those are more like sexy and subtle. Are they? Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> like, straight. You read like, many of those. Yeah, straight like. No, my mom answer the question. Have you read many of those? I've perused. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough about them to talk. By what? My mom writes erotic novels. I'm doing that She's now. Doing this. <laughs> Brenna's in. Nice. Do it. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> All right. So um, 
it's I've been saying that whenever we Fifty Shades Grey does come out, I want to make the movie Book Club of the Week or just make everyone on that week's show go watch it. I want it to be all dudes. I want it to be like the most oh, awkward man, dudes, like four dudes. Why does it gotta be awkward? Because it's such a weird, like, you know, like I don't know, it's more it's, it's, it's being marketed it's, it's being mm-hmm. marketed more towards females. So it's this thing. But I can tell I'm just waiting to watch it with people who've read the book and literally hear them in the audience go, Oh man. Like when they <laughs> cut away. They changed like, this. You part. never know. <laughs> like old old moms and librarian types just being like Oh man! Like that would be awesome. I want to know how many older women are actually gonna like blatantly glow. Go. They're gonna glow. (laughs) Glow. Gonna have a bunch of people who are like, I'll just wait to see that at home. Women are gonna glow. Let me get that on the on my red box. My my bathtub. Nice. Bathtub monitor. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's move on. We got a little bit of TV to talk about this week. Um, way too many new fall shows to talk about, but uh, maybe I think next week uh, John's gonna help us put a list together. And sure. I'll, and uh, we're gonna like. There's a lot. There's a lot. Can I wanted. I wanted to do a whole segment where we just read them off, and then just by the name alone, going no. Yes. What were some of the bad ones? Selfie? Not selfie. God. Selfie bad. I, I hear it's story. actually really good. It's just got a bad name. Selfie. I didn't really enjoy that. I, I don't. I, I don't want to like watch it. First First like ten minutes, and I wanted to keep going, but yeah. I'm. Karen is it hashtag Gillian? selfie or selfie? It's just selfie. I think. Okay. Karen I think the title Gillian might have a hashtag. Oh, is, oh, it's Karen Gillian. Yeah, it's the chick from uh, from, from Doctor Who and from Guardians, and then she and goes. My fair lady is what it is. Yeah, and then she goes and does that kind of trash. God, wow. what's wrong with you? Yeah. You wow. were so good. Well, well, someone's like, "Hey, here's your own primetime show." Yeah. You're gonna be like, yeah. "Put it on American." It's just got a bad accent. name. It's like whenever Matthew Perry was on Goon. Or go on. Go on. <laughs> the, hash, the hashtag was goon. There's no way around that. Uh, anyway, so, John, you summed us up the best. I sent, uh, we were sending out the, the list of things that we're going to talk about today's show, and you said that Lifetime's Grumpy Cat movie with Aubrey Plaza was your current version of Sharknado. Yeah, it's got to be that bad. It, like, it you, looks horrible. We have the trailer. We all watched it. Yeah. It, this, is it just me, or does Aubrey Plaza's audio sound like shit? Well, I'm just surprised. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I have a too. I have a high, too high of opinion of Aubrey Plaza. But I was like, why? Why did Aubrey Money. sign up for this? Yeah. Why? To be fair, it looks why? like a pretty great Lifetime movie. He yeah, no, it'll probably, it'll, it'll, it'll probably be the, that's not possible. <laughs> but yeah, because it, since it's Lifetime, someone has to get cheated on and someone has to get pregnant. Most likely, a teenage daughter. This poor cat. It's probably her. I feel so bad for this cat. <laughs> I just want to see the behind the scenes because it's just somebody doing it, this. Yeah, it's just I a puppet. Like drugging it the cat. Like <laughs> What's the name of the cat's real name? <laughs> Tard. No, it's got tartar a, it's sauce. Tartar, tartar sauce. sauce. Tartar I feel like tartar sauce. Tartar sauce just wants to be left alone. Like I just they, I like the pictures of him at cons with like a million people like hugging him. Uh, yeah. It's like her, her, her. Tart is a girl. He doesn't. Poor yeah, girl. she doesn't look happy. Yeah. Weird. We don't use those terms. They they renamed her once she got internet famous because her name is definitely not Tartar Sauce. I will say the movie does look like it's self aware. Like it looks like it's yeah. very yeah. like we're making fun of it. So there might be some campy. kind of campy inside jokes about it. So that, I could be cool with that. It, it looks like a home movie. Like someone just took the is. cat and was like, I will like, probably dunk, dunk, watch dunk, dunk, dunk. some of it. I won't lie. I'll totally watch it. I, I might get I sucked Aubrey into Plaza. all of it. Well, doesn't it debut like right after Thanksgiving? So I mean, that maybe that's their plan. It's like you're so doped up on turkey, you can't change the channel. You're like, <laughs> oh, fuck it, I'm watching the Grumpy Cat movie. <laughs> this is dopamine peaks. So I can see it as like a Saturday morning cartoon. I watch that. No. The, like, a cartoon that lasts like Think of the hours. merchandise. I know. So I own a Grumpy Cat. Who is it? Were any of you guys on the show when we talked about that star show, The Chair? Yeah, I was. Okay, so that's this is a show, and it's it's kind of like a on the lot kind of thing where they it's interesting premise. So Zachary Quinto, Spock produces it, and the whole idea is that they take two filmmakers, yeah. they give them the same script, and they both make their own version of that movie. And so you and then they have YouTube's Shane Dawson, uh, and he has his version of the movie called Not Cool, and then Anna Marta Mucci, Marta Mucci. I'm probably she's rude in that. Indie director. She's more of an indie uh, filmmaker, and she's got a film. Her version is called Holidaysburg. So um, it's really tough because Shane has millions and millions of followers. Yeah. Um, and so what they did is they put it up online and they said, hey, vote for the movie that yeah. you like the most. Um, but they, they tried to make it in a way that you had to answer questions about, about both movies. movies. So yeah. vote for which movie you thought was So it wouldn't just be like yeah. a Shane landslide. Yeah. But Shane's fans have smartly found a way to smartly. rig the system. They're posting their answers to it. They're posting yeah. their answers so you can copy them and you can just vote for Shane without having yeah. to watch any of it. So it's kind of a bummer because this chick is getting, she's kind of in the, he's winning in the landslide situation. It's a good example, I think, of like how, uh, I mean, we're talking about like, uh, Transformers of how uh, it's, it's not a it's not an uncommon theme for the film that 
gets raved critic reviews, does bad in box office, but the one that has like on the tomato meter like you know ten percent, but the user's rating is up in 90. the nineties, makes all the money. Yeah. It's t- you know as far as like like high art, it's total shit, but it makes loads of money. So it's like that question of like what is success? Is yeah. success yeah. that it did well and it's popular, or that you know the people who supposedly have the high opinion say it's good? Well, money. I think it's if yeah. I think his What'd audience you say? Is money 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 oh, yeah, that's money. who wins it's always that's who wins. <laughs> I think his audience is is absolutely gonna love it and in that way i think it's a huge success and i'm wondering it looks uh, like his Qu- is it quinto is that his name zachary quinto mm-hmm. i wonder what his opinion was of sean um i hated the movie oh yeah no no i'm yeah. saying like yeah, he what was his it. opinion of shane? of shane dawson before all of this because if he after. didn't like that content to begin with which i'm i'm i wouldn't be surprised if he didn't it's like this is it's why gross. why would you be surprised what i would say is okay this is what we knew we were getting did you make something that is a reflection of the stuff that you mm-hmm. do that your fans are going to like. So it's less of an issue of do I find this objectively good versus yeah. did you execute upon your objective and how you needed to make a movie in order for it to be successful. Well, I watched both trailers and I couldn't even, his is like a four minute trailer and uh, I couldn't get through it all. I got about two minutes and I watched hers and hers is good. Uh, it's it, Hers looks like a real film. Mm-hmm. Whereas even his movie, like the tra- it looks like a web video. Like someone made it, a fake like trailer Fred. for his yeah. Shane Dawson film. <laughs> it's like when Fred came out. It's just like oh a, the Fred movie. Which oh, I, is that the I watched one? it. No, Nickelodeon. No, like it's on. Uh, it was on Netflix for a while. There was just this whole. I think Fred I think movie. Nickelodeon Fred! made it. Does he have multiple it, movies now? Yeah, Probably. he does. Man, but yeah, his it's, his movie did not look good. And it looks so gross. It looks really gross. And Shane and uh, so Zachary Quinto came out and saw the movie. Said he was embarrassed by it. Yeah. Wants to distance himself from it. Wants to have nothing to do with it. Like his name on it. Said it was like uh he said all he said a lot of things. Yeah. He came out and just said this other person. He was really he pretty much as a producer of the show of this show competition show. You gotta get, you gotta stay neutral. Yeah. So, but he pretty much said he was like, I'm really blown away by what uh, Anna did with her movie. And I and and I was really really enjoyed it. Don't want anything to do with this piece yeah. of shit. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but pretty much yeah. what he said. The gamble you roll. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna play this game of uh, whatever his involvement in was in choosing Shane yeah. is like we're gonna pull the internet celebrity yeah. who's known for this kind of content. We're gonna pull the indie director. I think he was just kind of kind hoping of that he would go a little a, higher a brow with it. He what? seems like a smart guy. I, I don't think this is just like really a reflection of I have to stand up to my principles. People are talking about the show again. We're talking about it. Yeah. I think it's just a good yeah. PR move. That People is, are aware again that, it's hey, very smart. I, this movie's not that good. This movie's good. I'm going to go watch both trailers. Yeah. And I don't think you were the only one who went and no. watched both trailers. So I, I think a lot of times when it comes to movie leaks mm-hmm. and industry leaks and stuff like this, it's, it's done by yeah. these companies because they're smart. They know yeah. what they're doing marketing-wise. And they're smarter than consumers. Well, let's leave it up to the fans. Why don't you guys go watch both trailers? Go watch Not Cool. Go watch the trailer for Holidaysburg. Let us know in the comments or tweet at us RT Screenplay. I'm very curious to see what everyone what everyone's thinking about it. I I, I think it's pretty obvious what they are, but I'm curious to see like you know because everyone's different. Um, okay, so really quickly, uh, we're about to jump in our movie book club. We all watched Short Turn Twelve this week, but I just want to also say that. Uh, Ricky Gervais is doing a David Brent movie. Ricky Gervais. Ra- oh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> and uh, Stephen Merchant, who had a show Hello Ladies on HBO, I think the show didn't get a second season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what they ended up doing is they ended up just making a TV, an HBO movie that kind of closes up all that the That I'm really excited like about. It was, I enjoyed the TV show a lot and was really sad when I found out it wasn't getting picked up again. Yeah. And most of our gamers mostly know Stephen Merchant as the voice from Portal 2. Wheatley. Yeah, he's Wheatley. He's, yeah. he's the, so the sh- funny. I, I, I guess I don't know why people just didn't grab onto the show. It was really fantastic and well written. His character was like it was it was a mixture of that that awkward humor yeah. that Steven and, and Ricky are known for. Yeah. Um, but uh, it I, I you wanted like the show ended with you wanting to know more and more stories of this character because it didn't resolve itself. Yeah. Which I guess is why I'm really excited about the film because I wanted some well, sort of result. Can I ask you guys a question? Go ahead. Uh, if you were king, whatever. What's <laughs> the one show that you would force? To come back, Firefly. like you'd say, I want Firefly. Firefly, yeah. Herman's I want, I want, I want resolve. Herman's Firefly. head. Yeah, that movie did not happen. Herman's head. I refuse. No, Herman's head. No, I don't. But like, you, you saw Serenity, so like, in, I refuse yeah. to admit. I, I don't want that to be canon. Serenity. Yeah. Or maybe John from Cincinnati, don't which got it. really dumb at the end. Just to leave it's from good, the but I don't want it if it just <laughs> could disappear. I'm curious, Gus. What show would you bring back? Uh, Lost. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. Why? I want to keep reasons. talking about it. Let's get so, yeah. yeah. Let's, if we're not talking about Lost Marvel, back. we're talking about fucking Lost. Gus is trying to it's, lure me into a trap. Let's it's do it. Lost let's through talk the about eyes it. of the dog. What's that? Lost through the eyes of the dog. 
Yeah, he's like, what, where did that dog go? Like, it disappeared for so oh, long. Yeah. Like, it's it's a fucking dog. golden retriever. It's not surviving in a goddamn jungle. I would yeah. love if there was some weird, like, fantasy, Kibbles like, survival bits. movie that, like, wasn't being billed as a Lost movie at all. But then at the end of the movie, you, you realize it's a big tie into Lost. <laughs> Just, like, Homeward Bound 5. <laughs> <laughs> Quest for the Island. You don't know if there isn't already a Homeward Bound 5. That's be. why I said 5, because I was like, I don't know if there's a 3 and 4. I'm nice. just going to assume. I, I, I don't think you, you, you gave it enough credit. <laughs> all right, so let's finish on up. We're talking movie book club. Uh, all of October, we watched kind of slasher genre fun movies. So this week was a, a kind of going back to like more cinematic, more film. Like these Indeed. are good movies. Maybe you might have missed them whenever they came out the first time around. The film is Short Term Twelve. Um, it's got Brie Larson in it, mm-hmm. who I Scott Pilgrim. Um, and then it's got I forget these other actors' names. She's mostly the Gallagher. Uh, yeah, the Gallagher Junior. Gallagher Junior. He is uh, his name is. John Gallagher Jr. Well, I think he's the one from, newsroom, from Brooklyn correct. Nine-Nine. I, is he? A, yeah, oh, he's he is from he's Brooklyn like, Nine-Nine. He's pretty kind of quasi lead in, in he was He was kind of Paul Ruddish in this movie. I kind of love this Paul Rudd thing going on. He's good in Newsroom. Yeah. I, I love... Overwhelmingly likable character in Brie this. Larson was in Community, and she was in what else? Scott, Scott Pilgrim. She Scott was in uh, Yeah, she plays a girlfriend of uh, Mad Men? Abed. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Brie no, Larson. Um, she was also in... Um, Jump 21, 22 Jump She's a, 21 she's Jump Jonah Street. Hill's love interest in 21 oh, Jump Street. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah. I've, like, you know, seen her in Scott Pilgrim, and she's, like, you know, in 21 Jump Street. She's real cute and blonde and stuff. And just She's not really a girl that gets done up, but they have her bare minimum in this movie. Kind of like Julie yeah. Roberts, Aaron Brockovich, like, not a lot of makeup, kind of frumpy clothes. The whole film had a stripped look to it. He was easy, yeah. like, desaturated. Oh, I loved it. I love, it reminded me a lot. When I saw the trailer, I was like, this movie looks a lot like it's going to be, like, Half Nelson, that Ryan Gosling movie. Yeah. And it ended up being a lot like kind of tone wise like that film and it did something that I love I love those shaky tight camera angles it's two people on a bed having a conversation but there's some, a lot of handheld there's, so, there's they do some some tripod stuff but they're yeah you're right like 80% handheld well I mean that Chasing there's also there's a, a thing called a steady cam and it's basically you put a camera on this harness mm-hmm. and a lot of times you can't tell that's handheld yeah but they intentionally were shaking the camera and yeah. wanted to make it look a little crazier and raw and it's a bit heavy at times, but I, I do think it helps emphasize like this is such a minor, like um, a minor event within yeah. the world. It's just like a bunch of like a collection of kids. Yeah. yeah. But it feels so important within that group. And I thought that What's was the name of the director. Oh, it's uh... it is Destin Daniel Critton. It was his it was his master's thesis, right? Because it's based off of his two years he worked in a, in a in a short term foster I, home. I wonder if Nate is based on him. Yeah, the original character. No, the 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 original character, the lead character, is based um, off of him. And originally, in his short film, was a male, and for the feature, they turned it into a female. Oh, right, because okay. he made this into a twenty-minute short. Right, and then he made it again, into except a feature. as a, an. That's hour a lot of like long. rehashing. Like you have your thesis, yeah. and then yeah. yeah, you kind of like he. How long has he, has he been like working on this one story? This one story. I think Sling Blade was the same way. Similar and if you go back and you watch that short of Sling Blade, mm-hmm. you're like. How are you going to make? Well, this it's like a lot, that movie. happens a lot. It's, it's with, interesting. With, it's, with some it's of the a cool biggest, model. with some of the movies people know that that's like the case when they started off as shorts. I think uh, Boogie Nights started off as a fake, oh, really? fake mockumentary about this fake porn star called Dirk Diggler. District Nine and was if you want to take short. this full circle. It's true. Take it back to Neil Blomkamp. Uh, District Nine was yeah. based on his short Alive in Joburg, yeah. which was uh, very much. It was this, it was the same pretty much movie, a smaller version, not CGI though. It was more like proof her. of concept, is what it was. Yeah. yeah, it didn't follow the story of District Nine, but it kind of set the it, setting. It had that whole world. apartheid kind of thing yeah. going on. So moving back over to Short Term Twelve, I don't. This is a film I don't understand how it fell through the cracks. It did really well in the festivals. It was a big film at South by. Um, you guys, I, 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 I'm completely on. Like I love this movie. The reason you, why you, yeah. you guys, some of you guys are on the fence about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I'll tell you why it felt to the crash because it's the kind of movie that you need to invest in. Like you, it's it's slow starting. It you have to you have to like sit down and be ready to to wait to buy into these characters and to get the story and mm-hmm. to get to the meat of it. And sometimes that pacing. You know, people sometimes aren't. I'm not in the mood for that kind of movie. Sometimes, like you know, you you those are kind of that's kind of film that you need to like. All right, I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna watch this kind of film. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna spoon feed me anything, and it's not gonna not gonna zip through. I'm gonna have to sit and wait for this really to develop and percolate. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got kind of lucky because I literally had no idea what the movie was about. So at the very beginning, where this kid just runs out and he's trying to escape, Sammy. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Well, is this 
a mental hospital? Is this like, is there a killer on the loose? Are they doing experiments? Like trying to explore all the different genres and then you realize that this is a very kind of close knit thing. Yeah. And I think it takes a little while, but I think as soon as you meet, um, who's the, um, the African-American uh, uh, about to turn 18. Marcus. Yeah. Like as soon as you meet him and you realize that he's getting so angry and anxious about being released into the world, mm -hmm. yeah. I think you get an idea of what is this setting and how important it is because now you're comparing it to the world out there and yeah. you see that there's a person in here that seems like a place that none of us want to be yeah. and the thought of leaving it is terrifying to him. So as soon as I that kind of unfolded, I was... I was I was in. You're sucked in. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say Marcus's character sucked me in because of knowing a little bit about the the adoption and foster system. Yeah. Um, I know the statistics that happens behind a kid that ages out, and so if a kid like kind of understands like what's waiting for him outside, like I, I kind of connect with him a little bit because of the fear of what you know what like he was already setting himself up yeah. to get arrested. Like he was like, yeah. I know I'm gonna yeah. get arrested anyway, so why not do it now? I didn't know what to expect. I, a lot of my film friends been talking to me for a long time, and I was like, I'm gonna pick it one day. Um, but so they're having the conversation. It's uh, Mason and Nate, and then Sammy runs out, and it completely breaks like the tone of that moment. And they chase after him, and as soon as they like kind of have him have him down and whatever, and they're dealing with that. Mason keeps telling the story. Yeah, and and that's what I normal. and I immediately like I'm less than five minutes in this movie, and I just went. I fucking like this movie. Like I'm gonna yeah. like this movie. Yeah, yeah and, and it I, comes full circle at the end. And exactly. That my favorite part of you know that end sequence where the kid runs out again mm -hmm. with the American flag was actually when. Um, Mason tried to put his coffee. Like, <laughs> and it, uh, and it, falls, it falls. He tries to. He's like running, and he just tries to set it there because this is a serious thing. Yeah. But it's not a super serious thing. Yeah, like it's this be just okay. kind of represents okay. the kind of zaniness. And I don't want to use the word fun. It's it's hard to find the right <laughs> yeah. word that that this kind of world uh, that they built. And Oops. I thought that was pretty interesting. And I, I think real quick, the other thing I I absolutely loved was how they made fun of movies that are kind of like this by putting in a character who is pretty useless. Um, the, the new guy. The new guy who specifically said, I just wanted to work with low income. I want to be, I want to come in and I want to be the white knight. And, um, and then he got called out immediately. He was like, fuck Yeah, because well, you. you're like, what the fuck? You're like rich college kid coming in. You're overprivileged kid yeah, coming in here and calling. you a year off from college. You yeah. said yeah. it to their face. Kid. You said, I've always wanted to work with underprivileged kids. You're like, you don't say that to the kids. Yeah. yeah, and then when this girl's having a breakdown because she's, you know, I think her, her father didn't show up to pick her up, yeah. abandon her. <laughs> um someone asked the girl how she's doing and that guy answers and he's like, I'm kind of shook. He's like, not you. Did yeah, you I'm talking to you. And it's, it's funny because I think that kind of represents so many people and yeah. I'm sure if, if the director had experience within this world, mm -hmm. there's probably one guy yeah. that he remembered <laughs> yeah. that he put that in this movie. So I thought it was a, a funny commentary because you see criticisms like that in Hollywood. Like yeah. I think Dangerous Minds, a really famous example of you know, going in and making a movie about these underprivileged yeah. kids. Maybe that's what this needed. Maybe this needed a Coolio song. And then, like, this would have been a big movie. You know, yeah. uh, if no one understands that reference, then I was impressed you. by all the kids. I read that all the majority of the kids, this is like their first, first acting movie? job. The, oh, kid really? who, uh, the kid who played Sammy, the, the runner, he got the part after finding the call for it on a Craigslist ad and sent in a cell phone video of him auditioning, and he got the part. That's awesome. And he ends up being, you know, the he's runner. A, he's a big character. Yeah. I got to agree with Brandon. I really love the book ending of it. I love the fact that it starts and ends almost exactly the same yeah. way with the story outside and the kid running out. Like, it's almost poetic and it's like that slow motion. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I I love how the character, the plots like slowly started to unwrap. They didn't throw it in your face. They didn't over explain it. You know, you you watch. You, they don't tell you right off the bat like, hey, like Mason and Grace are were these guys running the place. We're orphans at one point too. Yeah. You know, and you find and that, that history out. History of abuse. You find on the history of an abuse and her story and that because like the whole time he's making chili rianos or a ran. I'm ruining that name. I'm an awful You're Spanish. A, I'm an awful, awful Mexican. Rianos. Mexican. Re is it chili yeah, rianos? Thank you, Gus. It's rianos, but you can thank say you rianos Gustavo. if anyway. you want. So he's making a Mexican dish, you know, and he and he's talking <laughs> and, he's, and he's and he's talking Spanish. Spanish. So the whole time I'm like, this guy looks like kind of Caucasian, but maybe like they're playing it up like he's half or something. Yeah. And then when you meet his family and he's like, you know, teary eyed, like it's a really emotional scene. And he's saying, thank you for like bringing me out. Of the you darkness. weren't just foster parents. Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. And, you know, so you, you get their storylines over time. It makes him a little bit less one dimensional. Definitely. Yeah. And I thought the whole movie was written really well. Like you mentioned the story at the beginning and the story at the end. 
story in the beginning had a really horrible ending. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it was some a kid attacked himself, or I don't know if he died, but it was it was bad. Yeah. And the story in the end had a really happy ending. Yeah. And it kind of mirrors the fact that you start with this world and it's kind of rough, and you go and you find a really nice end with the girl. Yeah. And they kind of mirror that in the story about um, about the boy as well. So I thought it was... I think it's really interesting hearing y'all's perspective on this movie because y'all have mainly just spoken about the guys in the film. You haven't mm. talked about the new girl coming in. You haven't talked about Brie at all. And those were the two characters that I mainly focused totally. on. I think that's really strange. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, it didn't resonate as as hard with me. I think I just knew too many people in in like high school or in junior high Cutters. and grade school. Yeah, with all of the issues with like young pregnancy and cutting and like the abuse and families and it just I tried to distance myself from it in the movie so I I didn't have this big resonating thing with the movie. I kind of did it on purpose. Yeah. But it's it, it is kind of funny to me that y'all are all talking, talking about, about the guys and I'm like well, this pregnancy, she's cutting herself, her dad hurts her. <laughs> my dad doesn't hurt me. Please do not think <laughs> that my dad hurts me. I, I will fast. say I do I do yeah. love I do I do love how Lee, Brie Larson starts off as this really strong I'm in charge yeah. kind of character. And then whenever she starts to slip, she, you you like you stop looking at her like as the superior and you almost start looking at her like one of the other kids who's going through a hard time yeah. and throwing a fit because when there's that scene where she shows up and she's in that and her in the girl's dad's bedroom while he's sleeping and she's got the baseball yeah. bat and you don't know if she's she's gonna fucking go off on this guy because she has her own issues with her own dad and at that moment I was going what movie am I watching right now like I don't <laughs> yeah. know like this could get really really yeah. intense you and, guys seem to have like a positive outlook at the end of it and I'm just. I don't know. This was like a really heavy movie to me. Well, they painted a little bit of a positive picture and then they gave yeah. that whole story about Marcus landing on his feet after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And which the was Sammy very kid fortunate. runs down, it's like of a sweet moment of him yeah. like yeah, running back cute. and forth. And they ended it they that. ended it light. Both Brie and um what's the the lead uh, actress? Yeah, like Brie Larson. Um both both the lead f- uh, female the blonde chick. Uh, b- both the lead females they realize at the same time that they do have to open up uh, the younger girl has to open up to uh, the um, the authorities in order to get into foster care and the older girl needs to open up or should try to open up to the people who love her to psychologists mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. psychologists and yeah. her boyfriend in order to really you know not get over it yeah. but be able to not let it eat her up inside and it's interesting because I you almost want to imagine what this movie would have been like if she wasn't pregnant. You forget in every single scene, true. in the undertone of everything she's doing, she's carrying someone inside of her, someone that can get hurt, mm-hmm. someone that can get abused. And I think that's a lot of responsibility. And it, it's interesting to think of how that one thing at the beginning of the movie shaped her emotions and her yeah. actions throughout yeah. the whole thing. Because I think she wasn't just trying to protect um, the girl, she wasn't just trying to protect uh, herself. Yeah. She was also trying to protect her her child. That this problem, this movie probably has my favorite. What do you call it when you when you're looking at the baby inside? Ultrasound. Yeah, this is probably my favorite ultrasound sequence. Sorry, John, Sorry, I don't friend. have kids. You know, but you know, like yeah, that's probably my old. Like every time you see it in a movie, like I've seen this before. The girl's like, oh, you can see his heartbeat. But for like when she's crying and like holding the guy's I shirt, I teared up. Like oh, I was, I that was the, the most out. real I've ever seen. Like a girl like reacting to like seeing a baby inside of her. It was. There are some really emotional he- parts in this movie that really got me in the field. Well, yeah. she's method. Yeah, she's so method. She so she actually pregnant. had a baby. All right, we better finish up here in a bit because got some going long. I apologize. No, don't apologize to me. It's your show. <laughs> so I'm, 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 just, I'm just browsing Twitter here. That's yeah, right. Let's go for an hour. We're just on the internet. <laughs> Sorry, Mariel. <laughs> it's mine. Did you buy the panties? Oh, yeah. Oh, buy yeah. the panties. I bought, I They're bought. really, really good. I will say, uh, probably my favorite, there's a lot of favorite scenes, but the, I feel like the moment, the biggest, like, ah, moment is when she gets on the car. Like when she actually starts slowly standing on the car and just starts going crazy in the windshield, that's like probably my favorite moment in the movie. Mm. So, would you guys, would you overall, do you like it? Yeah. D- too heavy, a little heavy for you at times? It was a little much for what I was feeling at the time. Definitely would have wanted to like rewatch Doctor nice. Who or something well, like next, Happy Happy. <laughs> next week, we'll make sure to, uh, next time you're on, we'll make sure to watch something like, like Mean Girls, which is the answer, I believe, right, Gus? Yeah, yeah, yeah Mean Girls. You <laughs> That's Meg's that journey. Meg, Meg, you can tell the answer. Just come on. It's mean Girls. <laughs> Meg, Meg is shouting Mean Girls. Cold, shiny, hard plastic. That's, I love uh, Janice. She's so hot. It's a quote from uh, Mean Girls, which is written by Tina Fey. Yeah. It's a really good movie. I still, my favorite line is whenever Tim Meadows talks to Tina Fey. He's like, pissed off that his sister named her son Anferny. <laughs> I really like Anferny. the... Anferny. Sorry. <laughs> 
I can't, can't, I can't do anything right. I can't help it if I have a wide set vagina and a heavy flow. <laughs> what? <laughs> remember, remember everybody. All right, I can't do this. That's the, all right, you're three for three. You've had a hat trick as far as crazy quotes. That was a movie <laughs> quote. Thank you, JJ. Sure it was. All right, guys. Yeah. And as, al- there. as always, you guys know, you can always go to roosterteeth.com slash screenplay to indulge with our in our forums with all the other film fans. Indulge. You know what? Indulge. Indulge away. If you want to talk about this week's episode, if you want to talk about Short Term 12, there's threads for everyone. So roosterteeth.com slash screenplay. Make sure to check that out. And next week for uh, Movie Book Club, something I'm really excited about. Shut Snowpiercer, up. motherfuckers. Shut up. Yes! This movie is awesome. It is awesome. It's super awesome. It's directed by Juho, jo, Juho Bong, which yeah. I'm killing his name. It's got Chris Evans, uh, Tilda Swinton, John Hurt, Jamie Bell, which many of you should know from Billy Elliot. And he's done a bunch of other stuff. I think he also uh, put a baby in Evan Rachel. Oh, uh, no, no. Evan Rachel Wood. I think that's his wife now. It's a great film. Uh, but yeah, can't Tilda say Swinton. I can't say enough good things about Snowpiercer. It's super cool. Kind of flew under the radar. I think it was VOD release with a minimal theater release. Yeah. It's finally on Netflix. Watch it. We're going to watch it next week. I'm super and, excited. And Jun Ho Bong uh, is the guy who directed The Host, which was the uh, the horror Korean horror film yeah, from yeah, like 2006. That movie's awesome. Which is another great that, film. Yeah. That's one of those movies I love The Host because with horror with uh, monster movies, they're always like, let's wait till the very end of the movie, the last 20 minutes to show the monster. And then The Host, they're like, we'll show the monster in the first five minutes, full shot in daylight. Like it just throws all the tropes from monster movies into the wind. If you've if you've never seen the host, it's on Netflix as well. Really good movie. Steven yeah. or not Stephanie Meyer's host is also no on. no we're not talking. Don't about get it confused no. with that. No. It's also there. Not at Don't all. Don't watch that one. And then also make sure to watch the Rooster Teeth game show. What's the name, John? On the spot. On the spot with your very own host, John Reisinger. And uh, what can we expect? It's really funny. Just a lot of random shit. <laughs> it's on uh, Thursday at five. Uh, we'll be live streaming it for sponsors. You'd be the worst, like sidewalk salesman. Hey, no, step right up. Yeah, it's gonna up. be. It's gonna be pretty. Dick nuts. jokes. Yeah. Huh. Dick jokes. J- uh, copious amounts. Copious amounts of dick jokes. Copious amounts on the of spot dick with John Reisinger. Yeah. Be sure to tune in. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Screenplay. Let's talk movies next time. That was a really awesome observation. Earlier.